Hey chess friends, National Master James Canty III here with chess.com and today we have game of the day. With the white pieces we have Mateusz Bartel and with the black pieces we have Vladislav Artemiev. Let's get right into it guys. We have uh, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, very common stuff. And then bishop to b5 of Roy Lopez, a favorite of many, maybe a favorite of yours as well. A uh, very classical opening played at the world championship level. Let's see what happens. After bishop b5, there's a6. And we have a bishop to a4 and knight f6. Nothing new here. Stuff you see every single day in the Roy Lopez. Knight f6. Very nice move. And knight to c3, which is usually an uncommon one. Not played as much as you would think or not played as much as the d3 or the c3 moves that you would see most often in the Roy Lopez. Now, knight to c3, this move is very flexible. Uh, one of the plans you would choose here with white is knight e2 and knight g3 or knight f5 even also capturing on c6 and playing d3 and keeping the position very close as we are giving up a light square bishop not having the bishop pair anymore calls for us to keep the position close because if if black uh, has two bishops and opens up the game black's going to be way better because those bishops are very sharp bishop to c5 from artemiev here preparing to castle and getting a third piece out just like white and white does go for more of a delayed exchange variation here after bishop takes c6, which is a very common move and one of the best actually here. And after bishop takes c6, there's d takes c6 and then d3. Like we said, keeping the position closed because if we open the game up, these bishops are going to be monsters that we are not going to be ready for. So now after d3, there's queen e7 from Artemiev here, uh, preparing to castle either to either side of the board actually and defending the e5 pawn and a lot of flexibility here with the queen e7 move h3 from bartel and h6 from artemia h3 actually stops and prevents anything from swinging in the g4 the bishop and also if you check games from the database knight g4 is actually a potential annoying move that happens in this particular variation of the royal Lopez. now after h6 there is bishop to e3 and he's saying hey please take my bishop on e3 if you do you're going to allow me to actually have an extra protection um, on d4 an extra pawn for protection on of the d4 square so if we push the d pawn we now have a very strong center with two pawns in the center also opening the f file for me as well what the rule usually is is what they say is to take is a mistake not all the time there's always exceptions in chess if there's a free queen you're probably most likely going to take that free queen but to take is a mistake here so if, if i'm going to capture it i have to ask myself is it better for my opponent or is it going to be better for me so instead of bishop takes c3 actually artemiev says uh we're just going to back it up keep the bishops here yeah it's not the best bishop but i still have two bishops versus one bishop after bishop d6 there's castles and then c5 from artemia very strong move not castling actually which he could have but he plays c5 to further stop d4 and actually clamp down on the d4 square in a maroxy bind fashion and the maroxy bind you would usually see it in the the sicilians with a pawn on e4 and a pawn on c4 gripping and binding up the d5 square and you see that here in the reverse with black actually gripping and binding up the d4 square so he's going to have to remove his knight play c3 and then finally play d4 without e4 hanging because this pawn is actually defending e4 so a lot of a lot of chess left but at the same time this bishop is absolutely gross terrible bishop but we have clamped on d4 so bobby fisher says to get squares you got to give squares and that's kind of the situation here pretty strong from both sides now after c5 there's knight to d2 here maybe preparing an f4 push also swinging into c4 and now in this position you know what would you actually do right you would probably maybe castles right maybe bishop e6 maybe even playing b5 what would you do take a take a second look at the position and what would you do in this position well, this is what Artemiev did. He actually played G5. G5? Whoa, hold on. G5. Now, actually, if you check the database, this move actually has never been played yet, actually. So for Bartel, being an experienced player here in this position, Grandmaster, he's very strong, and he actually has many games in the database with him playing this style. He actually always moves the knight to D2, usually. He, he also has some games you'll see with knight e2 and knight g3, but he hasn't faced g5 yet, which is almost Artemiev comes up with almost a novelty in a way, and the engine approves of this move. g5 very strong here, pushing Gary, the g-pawn, shout out to Simon Williams here, in the g-file fashion uh, more of the black lion if you're familiar with that opening from simon g5 is actually very strong so we don't have to castle this way in fact we can actually castle queenside if we need more king safety but in fact right now the king is safer in the center or safe right now 
After g5, there's knight to c4, and we have two moves, g4 and bishop to e6. Artemiev chooses bishop to e6 because it's very natural. Just keep developing. We could play g4, and he's going to play h4, and we're going to move this bishop anyway. So he chose to do it now with bishop e6. And now this bishop's very, very bad, and of course the knight wants to take it. Hey, we get rid of the bishop here. Why not? Even though it was already a bad bishop, we really don't want any structural damages here with bishop takes c4, so we're going to take on d6, says Bartel. And actually, uh, thank you for improving my structure but now we're totally fine but we definitely pre prefer to be black here just because of the the grip the dark square domination d4 f4 g4 is happening i can steal castle queen side what is happening here how is this even possible and then after c takes d6 there's 92 as a very uh common move in this position or in, in this opening actually 92 is uh, is a common move. We're going to go knight g3 and knight f5 usually, and again, maybe c3 or d4. But man, this is kind of scary. Now, in this position, guys, 92 is on the board. What's your next move? Here it is, guys. Instead of 92, he plays, or after 92, he plays g4 is on the board. It's time to open things up. And Bartel says, uh, -huh, not just yet. We're going to keep it closed. h4 h4 is on the board and then knight h5 immediately from uh artemia up here attacking the h4 pawn the f4 square is now uh under attack in some type of way here and maybe we can push f5 well of course g3 has to be played here if you want to defend the h pawn here and knight f4 looks cool but the best attacks are prepared and you need to prepare this attack if it's not prepared it's not going to work so after g3 we play f5 here and after f5 trying to open things up f4 is threatened this is a scary position for white and our king is in the center of the board here. Now, of course, don't try this at home. And you need to know what you're doing if you're going to keep your, your king in the center of the board. But white can't attack it yet. So after the f5 move is on the board, e takes f5. And you would think you just take the pawn back, right? Bishop takes f5. Or when you find a good move, Look for a better one. Bishop d5 and we live. What a move here. Look at this diagonal for this bishop. Can't be opposed by another bishop. Why? Because it's opposite colors. Opposite color bishops usually have the tendency to be drawn, right, in an end game. But this is not an end game. It's still middle game. Lots of play left here. And with that being said, they're very strong and the strongest usually in the middle game because this bishop cannot oppose this one and vice versa. We cannot oppose each other. So when it comes to defense, you can never help. You can never, ever help. And this is going to be devastating if we're able to, to have something here. Um, now, after bishop d5, there's knight to c3 from Ma Mateus. And after a knight to c3, there's bishop f3. Very strong move. If we go back here, the knight is attacking d5 and g4 at the same time. So we play bishop f3 and then queen d2 from Bartel. And after queen d2, there's knight to g7. So we can move our queen out of the way, connecting our rooks, doing everything we're supposed to do. But our position just looks bad, right? Like you just would love to be black in this position because it feels like we have something. Now, after bishop takes h6, snabbing a pawn there. Well, we're going to snap one too. Knight takes f5. And then white just says, oh, bishop g5. Everything's closed up. We're going to keep it nice and closed. You still can't castle yet. But what would you do in this position? Is Artemiev in a dilemma? What would you do? Here it is, guys. Well, Artemiev looks at the board, and then he looks up, and then he looks around, and then he flexes real hard after he does. Knight takes h4 for the score. Are you serious? What? Your queen's hanging. Here's also a quick note. Check this out, guys. The engine. The engine, I checked this like three separate times. The engine did not see knight takes h4. I can't believe it myself. I had to recheck it and check it three or four times just to be sure. You can actually check this on your own if you like. The engine did not see knight takes h4. They did really uh, other moves, queen e6. I think queen f7 was another one. There was a few moves, but knight takes h4 was not there. And after it was played on the board, the engine was like, oh, yeah, that is a move. And it goes up like ridiculously uh, great for black here. Um, knight takes h4 is a strong move. What is going on? Okay, why are you sacking your queen? Well, let's see what happens. If bishop takes e7, which is exactly what happened. Well, let's actually go with the other line. Bishop takes h4. It's pretty easy. Rook takes h4. And then queen takes. And wow, look at that mate there. Mate and we great. That is absolutely beautiful. So instead... He takes the queen. He says, I don't have anything else to do because this knight's going to get removed. And we're going to go here anyway. Look at this mate here. He found the square. And he also said, oh, if I can get there, game's over. What a move. So he says, okay, well, queen's hanging. I got to take it. Bishop takes e7. He goes for it. Instead of taking the bishop back, knight f5. Stop the mate on h1. Stop it. Okay, he can stop it. Bishop h4, right? But then knight takes h4 again. 
and then queen g5 and then knight f5 again how are you going to stop this mate what a beautiful sacrifice he definitely did his puzzle rush today hopefully you did yours now after knight f5 there's queen g6 check king to d8 stepping out of all the checks that he can he doesn't want him to take with check king d7 will be a fatal blunder maybe not fatal but queen d7 you just don't want to give him this much counterplay it's not fatal he still kind of can't block rook h1 but we want to do it the most accurate and king d8 is the most accurate way so now if queen takes it's going to be mate once again so you are forced to check me here and queen f6 from bartel artemiev says king c7 stepping out of the way and white gets very resourceful here and finds knight d5 check now you would think oh hey just take it just take it but then f3 and now he has, he gets out he gets out very clever very very clever but artemiev already sees this and says ha you're not gonna get me not today king c6 and steps out of the way and have a nice day that's a wrap there guys and after knight e7 you can play king to d7 and not take it at all this is hanging there's no queen on the board but you still can't stop mate and we great what a wonderful game that was a sweet sacrifice queen sacrifice that you saw here from artemiev and i hope you guys enjoyed this game today and learned something i'm national master james canty the third here with chess.com and i'll see you guys on the next video